Hello, my name is Ayameko. I'm a medical doctor in the NHS in the UK. You're yeah, welcome back to my channel. And um, if this is your first time in the, on this channel, this is step by step blab explained. This is a channel that is dedicated to help doctors, international migrant graduates in their um, relocation and registering as a medical doctor in the UK. So if this is your first time in my channel, please kindly subscribe. And if you're yet to subscribe to this channel, please kindly subscribe. This will ensure that um, you don't miss out on important videos and also you will get notification when we release new videos and also this will encourage us to make more videos so please kindly subscribe to this channel so today i'll be talking about how to get into imt that's the internal medicine training i know many people could have Add about how difficult it is to get into training in the UK. In fact, when some people are planning to relocate to the UK, they already have it at the back of their mind that they can't get into any training, that the only training they can have opportunity is a GP. I so much respect general practitioners and um, I, I, I value the job they do because it's a very difficult job and they do it very well. So this doesn't mean GP is not a good specialty. People before coming to the UK, they have it at the back of their mind that they don't have a chance applying to any other specialties apart from GP, even if their interest lies in other specialties. So these are different cases. There could be someone that loves general practice and have it in their mind to be a general practitioner. Great, amazing. But um, this, this video is for those that love the internal medicine uh, pathway, but they are scared to apply for internal medicine because they feel it's more competitive and more difficult to get into. So this video is a guide to help make the internal medicine application easier and more likely to be successful. So in for you to get into internal medicine training, the first thing you need to decide is be sure that you are interested in internal medicine. So if you're sure that you're interested in internal medicine and you will enjoy practicing in internal medicine specialties, then you're welcome to apply for internal medicine training. That is IMT, previously known as CMT. So just a brief overview of the internal medicine training. It's, it's usually a seven years program. That's ST1 to ST7. That's specialty training and one to specialty training seven. And um, in some few other cases could be longer like up to eight nine years depending on the individual and um, some people may decide to take a year out of training or some people might decide to um, do some other things during training which might um, elongate the training a bit but usually seven years that's st1 to st7 so the first two years st1 and two um, one is a junior doctor they're from st3 one becomes a registrar and acts as a registrar from ST3 till ST7. That's what we know as the medical registrar. You need to know this information before deciding to go for internal medicine training. Then the question is, how do you make sure that your application is successful for internal medicine? That's the question I'll be answering today. There's something we call portfolio building in the UK, portfolio building. In some other country, they will call it CV or curriculum vitae. So it, we call it portfolio in the UK. And what do we mean by portfolio? It means that you build things, you gather things, you engage in things that will support your internal medicine training application that will make your application stronger. When you're applying for the internal medicine training, there are a few questions that you'll be asked that um, during your application. So things like um, commitment to specialties. So how do you prove that you are committed to the internal medicine pathway? How do you prove that you're committed to internal medicine that's the first question that they need to answer because some people just 
um, apply for internal medicine because they can't get other specialties. So it's not like they are committed to it, but they just chose it because they can't get some other specialties. So you need to show, you need to prove that you are committed to internal medicine. And how do you prove that you're committed to internal medicine? So one of the ways that you can prove that you're committed to internal medicine is doing jobs or getting jobs in internal medicine. So if you pick up jobs in internal medicine, that's a good way to show that you're committed to internal medicine uh, training. So, but what if you don't get a job in internal medicine? What you can do to also prove that you are committed to internal medicine is to is to actually um, do locum shifts or after start sessions in internal medicine specialties. So many trust gives you study days, or so you can use this your study days to go to um, a medical ward or to attend the um, go to a medical ward, see what happens there after start sessions. This could be for like a week and. When you do this, you learn about internet medicine and it's a way of showing that you committed to internet medicine. Another way that you show that you committed to internet medicine is by doing audits and QIPs in internet medicine. So I will still be doing a video on audits and QIP because this is another topic that many people may seem not to understand. So I'll be doing a video on audits and QIP in one of my next videos. So it's important that you subscribe so you can get a notification when these videos are released. So if you do audits and QIP in, in internal medicine, that's a good way to show that you are committed to the specialties. So the another way to show committed to specialty is by attending teachings or, um, or lectures in internal medicine. So that's another way to show that you're committed to internal medicine. So you could attend uh, CPD trainings just to show that you are, have interest in internal medicine because they want to be sure that the people that are finally chosen for internal medicine training are those that actually want it, that are those that actually love internal medicine. So after displaying your commitment to specialties, also showing your commitment to specialties. Another question that is very pertinent that will be asked during your application or interview. Sometimes these questions also come up during your interviews is your interest in other things. Now, they don't want doctors that are that don't have influence or that don't have interest in other things. For you to be a healthy doctor, you need to have interest in other things. So people that are very good in things like um, I know a few doctors that are programmers, that are social media entrepreneurs, that are very good athletes, plays football, hockey, volleyball, and they are very good in it, and they have won several awards in it. Uh, very amazing graphic designers that are doctors, and you know, having these skills improves your value as a person, and not just as a doctor. And doctors that can actually do this, um, they, they, they gain extra points, they gain um, extra value when they are being interviewed because they are not just streamlined to just practicing medicine. They are more likely to live a healthy life. They are less likely to be depressed because engaging in these things reduces the chance of depression and makes you, um, it makes the brain, makes a doctor more active and makes them sharper. So those are the kind of things they look for. So it would be bad to ask if um, a doctor has other interests and they said that no, they don't have any other interest. It's not a good sign at all. Then let's go to the older things that one would actually, that, that, that something will call a point, point scoring during IMT application. There is a score being used to assess candidates for their high MT applications. And there are things that, this, these are things that carries points and the total of the points will determine, the total of the points together with the total of the interview scoring will determine what rank that person or that individual would be placed in their IMT application. So what are the things in this current? And this is one of the most important parts that 
people need to pay attention to. But when it comes to this point, you can only claim this point if you've actually achieved these things. You cannot claim the point if you are on the way to achieving them. For example, someone that is in a master's program cannot claim point for having a master's until they've actually completed the master's program. So I will start from the first set of points. This is known as additional undergraduate degrees and qualifications. Additional undergraduate degrees and qualifications. So the first option says degree obtained during medical course, e.g. intercalation, BSc, BA. So if someone has first class honors or equivalent, in their degree obtained during their medical course, they have six points. So, for example, some in some countries, they first have to do um, a, a, a they first have, in their medical course, they are awarded a BSc or BA in the first three or four years before they go to their clinical year. So if in medical in medical schools such as that, if such people attain a first class, they have six points. Degree obtained prior to medicine, first class honor or equivalent. So let's assume someone have done a medical or non-medical related degree before they start their medical school. Then they gain this point if they graduate with a first class from this degree. The degree obtained during medical course. So if someone actually have a BSc during the course of the medical school and they didn't graduate with the first class but have a second class upper or two and they have three points. The degree obtained prior to study medicine. So if someone also um, have a degree before they started their medical school and they have a two one, it is three points. If such person have no um, degree while in the medical school or have no degree prior to starting the medical school, then they have no point. That's zero point. So it's an advantage for people that have done a degree before medical school or during medical school and they graduate with a second class upper or a first class. It is added advantage for them. So people with first class get six points. People with second class get four points. And we go to the postgraduate qualifications. So PhD or Doctor of Philosophy, even in non-medical related qualifications. So if someone has a PhD, they get six points. Even in non-medical related degree. Then if someone has a Doctor of Medicine, or Master of Philosophy, MPhil, even in non-medical related degree, they have five points. If someone has MSc, MA, that's master's degree, that lasts eight months or longer, full-time equivalent, then they have four points. If someone has met MD, that's Doctor of Medicine, got into a dissertation, they have three points. If someone has other postgraduate diploma or postgraduate certificates, they have two points. And if they have none of this, they have zero points. The next set of points is for prizes and awards. So someone with high achievement award for primary medical qualification, e.g. honors or distinction, awarded to no more than top 15%, they have six points. So someone that graduates with merit or distinction from their medical school have six points. Then someone awarded national prize related to medicine have four points. Someone with one or more prizes, distinctions or merit related to parts of the medical course awarded to no more than the top 20% have two points. So people with distinction, with prizes, they have two points. Then if, if someone has none of this, they have zero points. And the next set is presentations. So if someone has an oral presentation in which the person was first or second author, which was given at a national or international medical meeting, they have eight points. Eight points for presentation. 
at a national or international meeting, then a post, if someone have a poster presentation at a national or international meeting, they have five points. If someone have an oral presentation in which they were the first or second author given at a regional medical meeting, they have five points. An oral presentation in which I was first or second author was given at the local medical meeting, they have two points. A poster in which I was first or second author was shown at a regional or local meeting, they have two points. And if someone asked for presentation, they have zero points. The next set is publications. So someone that has two or more pop cited original research publication in press, they have eight points. I am a co-author of two or more PubMed cited original research publication. They have seven points. A first author or joint first author of one PubMed cited original research publication or in press, that's six points. I have written at least 50% of a book related to medicine. This does not include self-published book. That's six points. I am a co-author of one PubMed cited original research publication. That's five points. I am first author, joint first author or co-author of more than one PubMed cited other publications such as editorials, reviews, case reports, letters, etc. That's four points. I have written a chapter of a book related to medicine in its broadcast sense. This does not, in its broadest sense, this does not require self-published books. That's four points. I am first author, joint first author, or co-author of one PubMed cited other publication such as editorial review, case report, and letter. That's three points. I have published one or more abstract, non-peer-reviewed articles or published articles that are not PubMed cited. That's two points. And if someone after add any of this, that's zero point. The next step is teaching. Is teaching. Then how do you how do this call the point for teaching? I have worked with local tutors to design and organize a teaching program, a series of sessions to enhance locally organized teaching for healthcare professionals or medical students. I have contributed regularly to teaching over a period of approximately three months. Or longer I have evidence of formal feedback that's six good points I've organized a local teaching program for healthcare professionals or medical students consisting of more than one session and contributed regularly to teaching over a period of approximately three months or longer I have evidence of formal P feedback that's five points I have provided regular teaching for healthcare professionals or medical students over a period of approximately three months or longer. I have evidence of formal feedback, that's three points. I have taught medical students or other healthcare professionals occasionally. I have evidence of formal feedback, that's two points. If someone has none of this, that's zero points. So in total, it's about 53 or 54 points possible points that one can have in total. So what happens is that they calculate the point. Then another thing I want to mention is MRCP. Having MRCP, if you've written one or two or you've past MRCP one two on paces, it's really good, even though it doesn't add to be to the point, but it's a great show of commitment to the internal medicine specialties and um, it, it's really tend to make the examiners look um, look favorably at the candidates during the interview. It's a good show of commitment to specialties. So what happened is um, they, they calculate the score then together with the score one gets at the interview and the candidates are ranked based on it. So based on the candidates ranking, that's how offers are being made. So the first rank candidate would probably get their first offer. Then the second rank candidate, third rank candidate, then down to the last 
rank candidate for the available slot. So if you, for, for example, if someone ranked 1000, they're going to look at what are the programs that you have run because what you do after the interview if you if one is successful is they rank the spaces the slots available for internal medicine training usually around 1500 so you rank about 1500 slots the programs the rotations depending on your preference the locations then they go through the list one by one so if there is nobody ahead of you that has gotten your first preference, then they give you your first preference. But if the IR candidate has gotten your first preference, another IR candidate has gotten your second most preferred um, rotation, another third person, another IR candidate has gotten your third most preferred rotation, they keep going down until they find a rotation that is higher strength for you and nobody else has gotten it. Nobody above you has gotten it, then you get that offer. So that is for internet medicine. So if you get very good points and you, you it makes you rank very high and when you get very high, you have a higher chance of getting your preferred uh, program. But people that rank very, very low, people that um, didn't have a lot of points, some of them may not uh, be considered for for or even if you for for uh so they may not be considered for an offer or even if they are considered for an offer they may not end up they may end up not getting an offer because they ranked too low and there are too many people ahead of them but if you can score very well in this portfolio station and score very well in your interview you have a very good chance of um getting internal medicine training there's also something known as the competition ratio. So this is how competitive the specialties are. And um, I'll also be discussing about this later in one of my other videos. I want you to look out for that. So I hope this video will help you, guide you in your internet meeting application and um, make things easy when you apply for your internet meeting uh, training. Thank you.